hello everyone welcome to my channel if it's your first time joining my channel welcome if you are a previous subscriber or you're coming from a previous video on my channel welcome back I'm going to be continuing with the chandelier quilt and as you can see here the quilt top is completed and the rest of this video when it's edited will be the construction of the rest of the quilt. When I sat down just about 45 minutes ago to start editing this video to get it posted for you guys, I somehow, I don't know what I did, I usually take the segments of the video and I move them to this external hard drive. I don't like putting everything in my computer and bogging my computer down with a lot of files. So I move everything from the SD card to a external hard drive and then I do my editing. Well, somehow, I don't know how I did it. Instead of hitting move to my external hard drive, I hit delete. So that first whole segment of assembling the blocks, um, you can see that, let me open this up just a little more. Um, in assembling the blocks into the row sections, I deleted that whole section of the video and I feel like a complete idiot. Um, so after this little portion of the video, it will be showing the rows laid out on my living room floor. And then from that point, the continuation of completing the quilt. Um, I'm really sorry I, got, I deleted that. And um, I'm just going to have to really pay closer attention. And um, Luna was also sitting on my desk. And I was paying attention to her at the same time. And um, I just feel stupid for deleting that portion of the video. Um, it, uh, thank God I still have the um, portions of where the rows are all laid out on my living room floor and then sewing the rows together and um, uh, talking about that portion. So you guys will still be able to see that, that part. I um, have a little thread here I want to cut off. <laughs> um, yeah, so again, I apologize for that. And um, I will include, I have some photos. So right after this section, I am going to add the photos that I have of the blocks laid out on the floor. Um, Luna was trying to help me on um, block placement. So you'll see her on that portion, <laughs> on those photos as well. Um, and yeah, so... I, again, I apologize for that, and please stay tuned because the rest of the assembly of the quilt top with the rows will be coming right up after those photos. Okay, so um, I'll see you all soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, so we are back, and as you can see, I have the quilt bl blocks all sewn in to the rows, and you can see up here that I did this one little section in the wrong way, and there's Luna the Crafty Kitty coming to check out the progress. Luna, we don't want to see you do that. <laughs> and I just need to take that piece off and flip it around and re-sew that one. There are a few squares that I moved around like this yellow one up here. Um, I needed it to be broke up just a little bit in that area. So I moved that one around. Luna, can you go take a bath somewhere else please? Okay. Now she's laying down. Luna. 
Yeah. Do you like the way the quilt looks, Luna? Okay. That is my husband calling, so I need to say goodbye, and I'll see you in the next segment. Okay, we are back in the sewing room, and I have removed the block or the corner triangle piece, um, edge triangle piece, whichever you want to call it. Um, I have removed it, and we are going to sew it back in the proper spot or the proper direction, and then we will start piecing the actual rows together. I'm trying to get this lined up just right and I think I'm gonna go ahead and put a pin in here and here comes Luna the Crafty Kitty again. And I'm sorry for the interruption on the previous segment. My husband took my car to go gas it up for me so I wouldn't have to leave the house and interrupt my sewing today. We were supposed to go gas up my car over the weekend, but we procrastinated and just didn't feel like going out. Or at least to take my car out. <laughs> we did go out, but we didn't take my car out this weekend. So, Okay, so I'm going to sew this piece together. And I have my leader piece in. And you can see that here. Ouch, just poked myself with the pin. <laughs> I have to put my little flip-flops on that I keep in my sewing room because I can't step on the pedal, the foot pedal, without shoes on. Um, I know I messed up my memory having to align the edge here. Um, I know some people who can, who can sew barefooted. I've never been one of those people. I just, I have to have something solid under my foot or on my foot before I can step on the foot pedal. I have a friend on one of my quilting groups that she can't sew with shoes on. And it just, it, I don't know how she does it. Okay. When I start sewing the rows together, I'm going to make sure that I pin the seams that I need to since it is a longer section that I will be sewing. I want to make sure that I do have those seams lined up. Okay, now I have this one going in the correct direction again, and I'm just going to use my roller, and um, these seams were in this direction, so I'm just going to... I kind of like this. Um, <laughs> when I was pressing all my blocks to make sure that they were um, nice and flat and made sure I didn't need to square them up very much, I had my little, um, my little iron. 
this one here plugged in and I was using it here on my wool pressing mat and while I was sewing my husband came into my room and he was watching something on my big TV that I use for when I do my PS4 gaming and he asked me if I could put the game on for him that he likes playing and <laughs> I turned my chair around and I hit the cord to the iron and I didn't realize that I had knocked it over and it started to burn the edge of my machine. And I had just said in a previous segment that I did not like using this iron because of the risk of Luna getting hurt on my sewing table. And what do I do? I go and I, I melt a little section on my expensive faff machine. And my husband tells me, that's no big deal. It's not that big of a spot. You're never gonna sell it anyway. So yeah, but it was just the idea of it that I actually burnt <laughs> my machine. So, or melted a little part of it. Okay, so I'm gonna set this one aside and I am now going to set out all the pieces in order how I pick them up so I can start sewing them and I have a card table here off to the side this way and I have them draped over the card table so I can just pick them up easily and start sewing and I'm just kind of like folding them out. Um, I kind of had them folded when I picked them up. Okay, so I'm going to start sewing these together. And once I get them laid out correctly in the proper order, I will be back to show you how I'm going to match up my seams and to start sewing. So give me just a minute. Okay, so I have my first two pieces lined out and I'm gonna start sewing row one to row two, but I first want to make sure that I properly line up my seams. So I'm making sure that I have my corner block and then the top section and then how I know the next edge piece here, the triangle, lines up correctly. And that way I don't have another mistake like I did on the one piece that I had to take apart and re-sew. So I'm going to set that aside. And you can see here on these two blocks, so this is um, row one or segment one, whatever you wanna call it. Um, if you remember correctly, I said I was going to the top corner piece or the corner triangle. Um, I was just going to include that in row one since it is such a small piece. So, <clears throat> excuse me, if you notice um, the way the pieces line up, I want to make sure that the seams from row one and row two match up. So I'm laying it out and I know that I can match these seams, so I'm going to go ahead and fold over. And I'm going to make sure that I pin this section first. I'm going to match these seams up. And then once I got these matched up, I can come up here and pin this section and this one down here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'm just going to line them up. and make sure I pin. And I'm gonna pin on both sides of that seam. Um, that way it just, I just know that it's lined up and I'm not going to mess anything up when I go to turn everything around. I'm gonna go ahead and pause the camera while I pin this and I will be right back. Okay, so I have row one and row two pinned together. And 
I made sure that when I came up here to the top section of the triangle that I pinned here at the top, I have, when I'm doing um, piecing triangles, I always have problems where, where the points come together. So I always try to make sure that I pin those and I make sure that I lay everything nice and flat and then pin. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take this to the machine. And again, I got my little cheater piece here. And I want to piece these a little bit slower. So I'm going to come over here and turn the speed down on my machine. Okay, so I have it set to about medium speed. And that way I don't go too fast. And maybe uh, since I am sewing the longer rows together, that I don't get like a pucker in it or something like that when it's in my lap. Um, I have had that before when um, I'm sewing along and I, I'm not paying quite as much as attention as I should because I just kind of start zoning out and getting in the groove. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start this one. And again, you want to make sure that your previous seams are laying correctly as well. And Put my flip-flops back on. <laughs> it is one of those days where it's really windy outside today and I hope you guys can't hear all that wind blowing. Okay and I know I'm I'm not quite on camera. I've I've had to move my faff machine closer to the edge of the table I found that I was getting a lot of shoulder strain because I was I had it back here further and I was leaning far away or into the machine to be able to reach it and I was getting some neck pain and I think part of that was um, causing some of my migraines because the tension in my neck and the pain in my neck. So I'm trying to find alternative ways that are going to not cause as much pain. I think some of you can probably understand what I'm what I'm getting at that when you when you're at the machine for a while, you kind of like hunch your shoulders a little bit or you hunch them up into your neck without even realizing you're doing it. So I'm trying to make sure that I keep my my shoulders straight and my posture straighter. out and again I do have my quarter inch foot on my machine um, with the seam guide so um, I make sure that I still get my nice quarter inch seams and I'm actually kind of doing scant quarter inch seams and it seems to be working out well for this quilt um, I think when I was squaring up my quilt blocks, I think I only had to do like four or five of them, if I remember correctly. And um, that is a huge improvement on what I used to do um, before I got my quarter inch foot, uh, quarter inch sewing foot with the guide on it. I noticed I kind of wander a little bit even with the quarter inch, the regular quarter inch foot. And we're getting close to the first seam that I matched up on row one and row two. And I'm sorry I'm a little off camera um, here. Let me see if I can adjust this just a little bit. I will be right back. Okay, there you can kind of see a little bit more of the sewing machine. I didn't realize I had it so much off screen. Okay. 
So there's the first seam that we're matching up with the row underneath of it. So this is actually row one on top of row two. Okay, now I'm gonna remove the first pin. And where did I put, silly me, over here. I'm gonna move them over here a little closer. And I'm removing that pin that I pinned on the top section of the seam until I get that seam up under the needle and then I will remove the second one. These are just, you don't have to do it that way. It's just um, something that I've learned that helps me. When I first started sewing um, and quilting, I never pinned anything and um, my work showed it. I know there's some people that can just put the machine, put the thing right up under the pieces up underneath the needle and achieve straight seams and matched seams. I'm just not one of those people. Some patterns will tell you pin and pin well. Um, I've definitely learned my lesson. Um, I used to after that, when I when I just started doing it and just putting it putting it up underneath the needle and sewing, um, I would have to take my work apart a lot, um, and I wasn't putting pride into my work. And one of the things also I think YouTube has helped me with that as well in teaching because. Um, I want my work to be nice, as nice as I can achieve it, and so I try to show it in the best way that I know how. And I probably don't need to be going as slow as I'm going with this one. Okay, so now we're getting back to this corner piece right here, and I want to make sure that I have everything. I don't want it bunched up. I want to make sure it's laying flat so this corner piece doesn't kind of go off to the side at all. And I'm going to sew until I get right to my pin that I have here in the seam because I just... Do not like messing those corners up. Okay. And I also have some tweezers here that are a little sharper and I kind of use them as a stiletto. So now I'm going to, I hold them, instead of holding them together, I hold them where they're spread so they give um, a little bit more coverage of where I'm sewing. And I'm just going a little slower right there. Okay. So, let's see how we did. And... Clip off my little are my clippers. Okay. So my seams look really good. Um, the edges look pretty good except for where my little dog tail is where I can trim that off later. You can see that I have my quarter inch seam also in this little area. So um, I'm not going to trim off my dog ears until I get closer to putting my backing and the batting on. I may not even do it then. Um, and you can see that everything looks pretty good. I am going to 
it doesn't really give me um, any instructions on how to press the row seams. So I'm going to just kind of press them whichever way they kind of want to lay. And that is row one and row two sewn together. I'm going to go ahead and continue on. And as I get my rows done, I will lay the quilt out onto my living room floor again. And you can see our finished quilt top. If you do remember in the first videos when I talked about um, your fabric requirements and the uh, um, all your cutting instructions, I did cut my binding strips. But since I am not um, going to be doing the final quilting on this yet, I'm not quite sure if I'm going to include some of the leftover pieces that I had. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to do include them in like maybe a pieced um, backing. I may just do like a strip across the back in um, just kind of like, um, I think that, I think it's called piano key where you just line them up and I may cut these and just kind of like randomly put them in. Um, I may do that or I may make a matching throw pillow, but um, I did cut my binding ahead of time. So it's all gonna be in the bag with these pieces. And um, I may, I may just do a blue background and I have had people talking about lately on one of the quilt channels I belong to on YouTube, the quilt groups, that um, they've been talking about using flat bed sheets for a, um, your backing fabric. And I did a little research on that the last couple days. And I think I may do that because if you are familiar with the like the 108 inch wide backings, um, they can be up to, you know, 12, 20, you know, 17, 17 bucks a yard, depending on where you go. Um, and I don't really need one that big because, and I don't, I typically do not like piecing my backings unless I'm going to do a backing where I'm actually putting some of the remnants left in it. Then I will do a pieced backing. But other than that, if it's going to be one solid background, I like I like it to be one solid piece of fabric. So um, I'm going to think about that before I go into the final final quilting of this one. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and continue piecing the rows. Um, I'm not going to include that in the video since um, you did just see me doing these ones. Um, you, you get the idea of how to do it. And um, the pinning and the sewing and the pinning and the sewing, it would be a lot of segments being popped together. Um, so once I get the quilt top done, again, I will lay it out on the floor and let you guys see how the, the completed top is. So um, stay tuned to this video for that last segment and we will see you in a few. Okay, everyone, this is our last segment for this video. I have all the rows assembled and you can see I do need to press the quilt really well and iron it. Um, I am considering on the blue, I'm considering doing a blue border all the way around the quilt with possible some cornerstones from the leftover charm pack squares. Um, yeah, it looks it looks really good. It turned out really well. I'm really happy with the way it turned out. Um, we are gonna go ahead and close out this video and get it posted. It is a day late. 
about maybe two days late. Um, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed the videos on this quilt this far. If I do decide to put a border on, I will film that when I come back. Um, I still have to decide on what type of backing I'm going to use, whether I'm going to do a pieced backing or just a solid color fabric. And we will see you all soon. <laughs> bye bye. Oh, I almost forgot. Um, please, if you haven't subscribed yet, um, subscribe. We are almost to that thousand subscriber mark. Um, if you know somebody that would be interested in my channel, please um, share my videos with them and um, give the videos a thumb up, thumbs up. That helps with the YouTube algorithm to let my videos be seen more. Um, also, I will include the link for the uh, Sotec embroidery, I'm sorry, the Sotec thread spool holders. And if you use that link, it, um, it'll take you right to Amazon and you can purchase right through that link. I will earn a really small commission through that link and um, the money I earn from that will eventually let me um, put that money back into the channel for recording equipment, fabric, um, and things like that. Okay, we'll see you all soon. Bye-bye.